So welcome to TechnoDad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we're going to be going over Open Media Vault Extras. And so the first thing that we're going to do is actually explain all the different options of Open Media Vault Extras. And then the second half of this video, for those of you who don't have it installed, we're going to show you how to simply install Open Media Vault Extras on Open Media Vault 5. So this is a Open Media Vault 5 video and the Open Media Vault extras for that. If you're here for Open Media Vault 4, I have a Open Media or an Open Media Vault extras video from last year that I did just for Open Media Vault 4, so I suggest check that out and I guess I'll stick a link in the description so you can find that. And so if you like this video today, make sure you like, and if you haven't already subscribed, and here we go now. And a special thanks to all my patrons who without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. Thank you. Okay, so let's take a look at Open Media Vault Extras. And so after you install it, there'll be this tab here now on the left. And so let's just take a look at this and then we'll take a look at some plugins. And so here is the most confusing part, I think. So if we go up to this area, so in the past, Open Media Vault extras you actually had to turn it on and save and then it would install all the extra plugins and so open media vault extras basically started off as extra plugins and so some of them are like the flash memory plugin um, and if we go down a little bit the other one i like which i put on all my computers is the reset perm so it resets permissions really easily and there's a whole bunch of other ones in here. And you can see when the Open Media Vault Extras is installed, it actually installs an Open Media Vault Extras plugin. And that's how it shows up over here. So if we go back over here, so now uh, we don't actually have to turn it on. It's already turned on and the plugins are there. And so the testing repo are for uh, plugins that are being tested and the extras repo is sort of undefined at the moment and so for backports we would go up here to backports and we can enable them or disable them here and you can see after disabling it it shows up as disabled here if we scroll down a little bit and we look at Docker, so this is the way to install the command line Docker. It's very simple. Just click install Docker and it will install. And this is where Docker will be installed. So I don't suggest changing that because it could create problems. Next, we can scroll down and this is to install Portainer. And so Portainer is the sort of GUI to uh, Docker, so it makes it easier to just sort of type in things. And so here you can see how to add it, remove it, and then if you click on this one, it will open the web interface. Now down below we have Cockpit, and so Cockpit does a couple of different things, one of which is it also is a GUI for Docker. But also, if you want to run virtual machines, then you should install Cockpit. Same idea, install, remove, and just clicking this one will open the web interface. Uh, just in my trials here, I found that uh, if you're running Portainer and Docker at the same time, it can cause problems. Uh, maybe that has been fixed. I haven't checked recently. Now, if we go up here, there's also a kernel, ta a kernel tab, and so we're going to click on that. Basically, there's a lot going on on this page, and so if we start at the top, we have hold kernel version or unhold it, in case you want to do that. Set a kernel as the default boot kernel. So the Proxmox uh, kernel is great if you want to run ZFS, and so that will make your 
easier to run ZFS with less problems. And so ZFS is basically like RAID. And if we go down a little farther, we can see we have Clonezilla. And so what this will do is install Clonezilla. And then you'll be able to create an ISO uh, from the Grub bootloader. And then here it is to remove, uh, to reboot to Clonezilla. And next is Gparted. And so this will be able to set up different partitions. And again, reboot once to live Gparted. And then finally down below is install System Rescue CD. And then again, it reboots to that. So then you can use that to fix anything on your system. OMB extras. Now let's see how we install that. So first you need a OMV machine up and running. And I would suggest updating everything before you do this. So first do that. So go to update management, click the check mark and then upgrade. Once that's done, click close and then reload the page. Now your system is up to date. And so if we go to openmediavaultextras.org and go to the guide section, which is over here, and we scroll down, you'll see from the command line as root. We all we need to do is copy and paste this and then we can install Open Media Vault Extras. At this time, there isn't a deb file to actually install Open Media Vault Extras, so we have to do it this way today. So in order to do that, you need to download PuTTY. And so PuTTY will create a shell that we can load the bash script to. So once you've done that, uh, open up PuTTY and put in the IP address of your server. And that's right here for me, 192.168.8.146. Then hit open and then put yes. And then log in as root and your password. Hit enter. And so now we have a shell. Go back to the guides, copy this line, paste it into putty and then hit enter. And then that will take quite a while, but it will uh, install open me all extras. Once that's done, you can actually close that window. And we go back to our Open Media Vault and actually refresh the page. And now you can see our Open Media Vault Extras is there now. And now you can go through and install any plugins that you want. Add in Docker or Portainer or Cockpits and go from there. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.